Hello, welcome to the Friday, August 11th, 2023 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Boyan today wrote a quick and really neat diary about a weakness in SQL Server authentication that's not new, but still often overlooked because, well, uh, there are often no great alternatives. The problem is that if an attacker is able to observe the authentication process, there is a password being exchanged that's really just obfuscated. It's not encrypted. The obfuscation is pretty straightforward. You basically just swap the two nibbles in each byte and then XOR each byte with a five that's all it takes in order to then retrieve the original password and boyan wrote a little python script to make that even easier for you uh, to uh, perform as boyan points out that uh, often there is no great alternative here it would require a major sort of application uh, rewrite of course at that point you may as well use some more modern technologies like a rest api or something like this instead of connecting directly back to the sql server and back in April, Microsoft patched vulnerabilities in Windows Defender, and we now have, thanks uh, to research as SafeBreach, who originally found the vulnerability, more details about what this exactly involved. The researchers uh, did present at Black Hat this week uh, their uh, talk, which also included a tool Defender Pretender, that basically demonstrates that due to this vulnerability, it's not just uh, possible to alter the signatures that Windows Defender uses and with that of course you could easily make it blind to particular malware but also to get Windows Defender itself to actually run malicious code. Part of the issue here is that the signature files that the Windows Defender downloads are not just the actual signatures, but there's also executables involved here. And then these files are not properly validated after being downloaded, which does allow an attacker to essentially replace some of these binaries and with that execute arbitrary code. Again, this has been patched in April and always interesting to see how security tools can be used against you with some actually, in hindsight at least, relatively straightforward exploits. And if you have an interesting vulnerability affecting Dell's compellent integration tool for VMware or short CITV, the CVE number for this vulnerability is 2023-39250, and it's a static AES encryption key that is being used across all installs of these tools, so all customers will use the same key. The reason this key is important is that it's used to encrypt vCenter credentials that are stored in the configuration file. So the end effect, if an attacker can get a hold of the configuration file, they can now easily decrypt these credentials. Tom Paul with LMG Security found this vulnerability, reported it to Dell about three months ago. As of yet, Dell has not fixed the vulnerability, but today published a advisory stating that administrators should alter the root password, even though it's not clear if this is really just sort of to change the root password because it may have leaked, or if this will actually do anything to help with this vulnerability. A patch for this issue is expected in November. And researchers at the University of Toronto took a closer look at the SOGO input method, which is a custom keyboard that is produced by Chinese company Tencent. The issue here is that in order to effectively type Chinese, well, 
it's not easy uh, to do this uh, on traditional uh, keyboards. So that makes uh, this uh, Sogo uh, keyboard uh, so popular, which does use a cloud-based service to essentially provide sort of more intelligent uh, type ahead uh, suggestions. Now, typically you would use a TLS in order to protect the connection back to the cloud, uh, which uh, given that uh, this is used in China is not necessarily their preferred method. So they did what you should never do. They did develop their own encryption scheme, which they call Encrypt Wall. And of course, it turns out to be vulnerable. Tencent now at least released a partial fix for the problem. So we'll see if that's sufficient in order to protect the communication. Of course, still not necessarily recommended to use this keyboard. And in general, keyboard extensions that are using cloud components should probably not be used unless you have a real compelling use case here that justifies the risk. Well, that's it for today. I hope you subscribe to this podcast so you'll get it pushed to your device as it becomes available. Tell your friends about it. And thanks for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.